Let's visit Suzhou. All right, we're entering Shantang Street. Let the chaos begin. Shantang Street is an ancient pedestrian path dating back 1,200 years. It lines either side of the canal in Suzhou's old city, and it stretches from the Shantang River to Tiger Hill. It is seven traditional Chinese miles long, which is about two and a half miles in today's measurements. And it's worth visiting both during the day and at night. It's one of the famous things to do when you are walking along Shantang Road is to take a boat tour along the Shantang Canal. The canal tour is a fascinating peek into ancient Suzhou life. Buildings cannot be renovated for heritage reasons, so much of the structures are standing as they have for decades. Our guide told us that many houses don't even have running water, electricity or proper kitchens and laundry facilities. The residents here live like the old ways. Shantang Street on a Saturday night is busy, so you better be prepared. All right, one thing you have to do when you're here in Suzhou is take a rickshaw ride. This is gonna be awesome, right? Yeah? Uh, all right, we're ready to go. You cannot visit China without taking a traditional rickshaw ride. Our driver picked us up at our hotel, the Pan Pacific, and showed us some of the sights around the city before dropping us off at another famous road in Suzhou, Pingjiang Road. We have traffic for rickshaws, motorbikes, and cars here in Suzhou. All right, that was awesome. Take a rickshaw ride around the city. It's a great way to get into the small laneways. So popular spot is Pingjiang Road. You can come out here at night. We took a rickshaw ride to it and soon all of the lights will be lighting up and we're taking a nice stroll along the canal. How romantic. So it's kind of neat on the other side of Pingyang Road, there's a little narrow walkway away from all of the crowd. So while everybody's walking over there, you can walk along on the other side and see all of the all of the stores and all the people walking and you can do it in relatively uh, quiet fashion. One of the most interesting things we did on Pingjiang Road was to watch an opera performer apply her makeup and costume and then attend her performance. The transformation was fascinating to watch. Well, I think that was one of the most unique experiences I've ever had out at night in my travels. We came to see an opera singer get ready. She put on her makeup, she pulled her face tight and put on all of her jewelry and her costumes and then she went up and performed for us. And it was great. Even though I couldn't really understand anything she was saying, I could feel the energy and the laughter and the fun that everyone was having. And it really is something you should do when you come out here to Pingyang Road. Humboldt Administrative Gardens, and this dates back 500 years. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's one of the four famous gardens here in China. So it is a must when you come to Suzhou. So the Humboldt Administrative Gardens are not imperial gardens or royal gardens. These were owned by private families, so the rich owned them back in their day. Can you imagine? This was one private family's home. Wow. So if you're rich, this is what you're transported in. This is like the Cadillac. It's like a little hobbit town. <laughs> we are in Lion Grove Gardens and it is famous for its multi-level rock formation. It's another UNESCO World Heritage Site in Suzhou and definitely worth visiting. Be aware though, there are a lot of crowds and it's kind of small in here and it's tight because it's all rock formations and rock mazes. I love all of the walking caves. You can explore all these little nooks and crannies in here. We 
regardless of the amount of people here, it is still an amazing thing to see. The rock formations are very impressive, and just the way the gardens are put together is something you have to see when you're in Suzhou. So this is pretty amazing. The old city gate dates back 2,500 years and it is connected to the Pan Man Garden, which is connected to the Pan Pacific Hotel. So we're taking a boat trip on the Grand Canal and it's located just behind the Pan Pacific Hotel that's attached to Pan Man Gardens. Here you can catch a riverboat. The Grand Canal in Suzhou is part of the longest and oldest man-made waterway in the world. It stretches nearly 2,000 kilometers from Beijing and is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Construction began in 770 BC and it has been the Golden Waterway of China for more than a thousand years. All right, we're ready for some Tai Chi with Master Yang. To another direction. So when you come to Suzhou, make sure you book a Tai Chi lesson with Master Yang. He's world famous. He's won the gold medal here in China and in Hong Kong. And you can book him through the Institute in Suzhou. Just ask your guide to phone him. They'll know who he is. From the ancient to the modern, Suzhou has it all. For the best view in town, come on up to the W Hotel. There's an outside rooftop lounge. You can watch the light show at 8 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays, and you can see across the lake. It's absolutely beautiful, and what a great atmosphere. So you really have to come walking along the waterfront here at night. You get to see the light show. You get to see the fountain. It's very peaceful. Especially after the fountain show, it's really nice just to walk along here in Suzhou. Beautiful view. Come on down to the Suzhou Industrial Park where you will see the biggest shopping center in all of China. The Suzhou Shopping Center, it's a huge one and it is a part of the Gate to the Orient. This mall has everything. There's an ice rink, and I feel like I'm in Canada right now. Everybody's playing hockey. It's like the little tiny tots or Timbits are out on the ice. There's a pony park. There's a place where you can play laser tag. There's a carousel. You can go snowboarding here. It has it all, man. Well, here's an interesting fact. Suzhou is I Am Pei's hometown. If you don't know who I Am Pei is, he designed the Louvre, he designed the Hong Kong Tower. He has a, he's a very famous architecture around, architect from around the world. And this is one of his famous designs, the Suzhou Museum. So it's one of the places you must stop when you're in Suzhou and see the hometown of the famous architect. We have arrived at the Tiger Hill scenic area. Well, you know of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but did you know the Leaning Tower of Suzhou? This one has a lean of five degrees. It looks like it might fall over soon. Tiger Hill dates back to the Song Dynasty and is one of Suzhou's top attractions. The Leaning Tiger Hill Pagoda has become the unofficial symbol of Suzhou. And there are several other sites to see, like the Sword Pool, the Tomb of King Li Hu, and the Lu Yu Well. Okay, we're here at the Tiger Hill with the Bonsai Master, and I'm going to cut a bonsai tree. Now, this is an old tree, so if I make a mistake, that's it, I'm done. But no, we just learned how to do it, and uh, I hardly remember anything. But I do know that you have to leave three leaves. So where the branch splits, you want to make sure you leave three leaves so that all of the trees, with the branches will start growing and you can control it. So here I go. They have a lot of faith in tourists, I have to say. You ready for the snip? <laughs> Banzai! So I'm standing in front of a 
400 year old bonsai. It's the oldest bonsai tree in the garden and we do not get to cut this one. Only the bonsai master gets to take care of this one. So a popular day trip from Suzhou is Tong Li. There's all these beautiful canals and gardens around this city. It's only about an hour outside of Suzhou. It's a peaceful day riding down the canals of Tong Li. Tong Li is one of the six famous ancient towns south of the Yangtze River. It truly lives up to its reputation as the Venice of the East. Get lost in the back streets of town and be sure to take a gondola ride to experience the views from the water. Like Suzhou, it has a garden retreat that is worth a visit and there are ancient bridges, temples and historic residents dating back to the Qing Dynasty. Well, we're at the Embroidery Institute here in Soju, and I have no idea how these ladies have the patience to do this. I can't even see the needle to thread the silk. And then they sit here and they are very intricate. And it's such hard work that they have to work in complete silence. And then they go outside into the garden to meditate and relax in between sessions because it's a really tedious and very, it takes a lot of concentration. We are at the Silk Factory here in Suzhou and this is a must visit when you come here. It's a huge part of their industry dating back hundreds of years. And it's so important to them that they even learn how to uh, raise silkworms in school. They actually have to take silkworms home and take care of them and uh, learn how to take, take care of silkworms and create silk because it's such a big part of their heritage. And they, when they count one, two, three, you pull it. Now that would be one comfortable comforter, my goodness, filled with silk, can you imagine? So Suzhou is one of the largest silk makers in the world and there are a lot of wedding dresses here. It's actually the largest supplier of wedding dresses in China, so you must book a tour to see some of them. And if you do visit a wedding dress factory, make sure you visit Jishu. It is the biggest in all of China. Woo! <laughs> Suzhou is a memorable place to visit. While many people only do a day trip from Shanghai, we barely scratch the surface with six days in the city. So do yourself a favor and spend a few days exploring this historic part of China. If you enjoyed our video, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for update notifications. We put up new travel videos each week and we don't want you to miss a thing.